there welcome to my channel my name is Linda I've got lots of fun ideas for you today also today joining me are a few of my favorite fun friends hope we bring you lots of inspiring ideas um, can't wait to share those exciting details with you a little bit later so what are we waiting for let's get started today we're going to be working on DIY spring decor using mostly Dollar Tree supplies so let's get started with project number one for this project, I have two of these signs I picked up last year at Dollar Tree, so any round signs will do. And yes, we're back to our fabric uh, polka dot Easter basket from Dollar Tree. And then some of these wood words that came out fall time and some Jenga blocks. So what I did is I pulled out a wood word using my craft knife. There's a couple designs in there that had hello at the top and I wanted the hello part. So this is the one I had chosen because I like the print on it better and just use my craft knife and slice that off really easy. And then you're gonna wanna pull off the stake off the back of the sign. It was easy with that little tool there. And then of course take the rope off that kind of thing. And then I sanded around the edges on the other side um, just to let that wood show we will cover up the center uh, you know with paper so what I've got here is just a plain sheet of paper and I drew around the sign and I'm coming in about oh, a quarter of an inch or so and I'm redrawing the perimeter and that's what I'm going to cut out so that my pattern is a little bit shorter all the way around this is going to be my pattern now this piece of paper here it's a piece of cardstock and then so once we glue our paper on, it would look like this with our little bit of wood perimeter around. I like that. You could cover it fully. The paper, I'm going to use a scrap of paper is double-sided. I'm going to use both sides for our design. So what I like to do is I'm going to fold my piece in half and then trace it on. You could cut it out whole, but I don't know, just for my brain, I like to kind of cut it in half. Um, so I'll, you know, have half one side, half the other. That way I don't have to try and sit and measure in the center and all this stuff, trying to figure it out. It's already in half for me. <laughs> so I've got these cut out. Now this I picked up last year at Dollar Tree. I loved it because it kind of had these labels on the end of it. You could cut something out similar with like some foam board or cardboard or something like that. And I'm taking another design of paper that matches. So I've got three patterns here, a plain, a stripe, and a plaid, which look really nice together. I'm tracing this little little label sign out and I'm doing the same thing I did with the circle uh, sign there redrawing a new perimeter and that's what I'll cut out so that that looks really uh, you know nice on our little label and a little bit of that wood shows around the perimeter so when you're choosing patterns like stripes and polka dots floral plaids kind of go together a plain so you can see here i've got my stripe and my plaid and then we're bringing our polka dot in with our easter bag so i've just hand drawn a couple of ears really easy i'm going to pin them to the bag here now you could make these ears from scratch. I'll cut them out of the bag and you could have two different kinds of fabric if you want. That's why I wanted to use the bag here so that one side's plain, one side's polka dot. But if you wanted just two pieces of the same fabric and a couple pieces of felt you'll need, to create this ear. What I'm doing is already has felt in the center, right? So I'm pulling down kind of the muslin side, oh, about three quarters of the way down to expose that felt. And then I've cut a couple more pieces of felt from Dollar Tree felt for our inside. I've got some 18 gauge wire here. Uh, got it from Walmart. It really doesn't matter. You just kind of need a sturdy wire. Doesn't matter what gauge it is, just sturdy enough that you can like bend it, you know, on the ears of course now you could glue the wire in just like this but if you're using this bag that fabric on top is quite thin so you would see the wire and your glue through it so that's why i cut another piece of felt out to cover that wire i'm going to use beacon fabritac glue for this you can certainly use a hot glue gun and we're going to go ahead and wire glue our wire to our ear here so if you're making your own, you have two pieces of fabric, you're gonna glue, take one piece of fabric, glue down your felt, and then glue down your wire, glue down your felt again, and then glue down your other piece of fabric right on top. Where this is already done for us, we're just kind of disassembling it a little bit and putting it back together. Now I'm adding some glue here to cover it with our second piece of felt, and that way we won't see it through the thinness of that top material. See how you even see it through that thin felt? We don't really want that, okay? Now, if you're a hot gluer or a, you know, Beacon Fabri-Tac glue, you can go ahead and glue your whole ear together and shut. 
You all know I'll take mine to the sewing machine, so I'm just going to tack it down the middle a little bit with glue. Now, I only did this other piece of felt part way down because we want to leave the remainder of the ear here. It's a couple of inches as thin as possible. Okay? So you're going to see that little kind of ledge there of that second piece of felt, but that's okay. That's going to get covered up. All right, then I'm just taking it to my sewing machine here just to kind of give it a little bit of that uh, fun texture there. Again, you don't have to do this part if you're not a sewer. The hot glue or the Fabri-Tac glue would work perfectly wonder wonderful here, or any kind of liquid glue uh, would work great. Just kind of trim that excess there a little bit. It's peeking out, that excess felt, and then here's what my ears will look like. Now I'm coming in and I'm sewing my scrapbook paper. Those of you who might be new to my channel and those of you that aren't, you could probably say this with me, but I like to sew on my papers here. I think it gives it kind of a nice kind of country charm with a soft, subtle texture. I just sew on it like it's regular fabric. It's a size 10 or 11 needle, depending on the manufacturer. Stitch length is set on four. I use all polyester thread. That's what my machine likes. Cotton works best. And then I like to come in with the open end of my scissor blades and I scrape along the edges. So you can see the front where I've scraped it and another piece of paper where I haven't so you can decide what you like but that scraping kind of gives it a rustic texture now since we're sandwiching the ears I'm taking one of these wood circles and I'm cutting out on a piece of cardboard okay because when we go to sandwich an ear I'm going to show you here before we put the ear and see how nice and thin together that is when we put an ear in here now it's going to give us some space so we're going to use this piece of cardboard to fill in the space so what i've done is once i cut that piece out i'll just kind of show you here on this i laid my ears where i wanted it i put it on the piece of wood laid it on here just like this put my ears on it just like this traced around my ears and i cut that out okay so is that understandable and now i'm going to go ahead and glue this piece of cardboard to the wood piece and now when we lay the other wood piece on top, see how nice and sandwiched that is between it looks a little more finished off. Now, if you don't want to go this far or you're only using one sign, um, you don't have to sandwich. If you want to just use one sign, you don't have two and you want to just glue your ears on the back of one sign, a whole other option for you. So you could totally do this project with just one sign. Okay, so now I'm coming in with some uh, Dixie Belle chalk paint in the color drop cloth and I'm just kind of coming around the edges on both sides along the front about an inch and then around the edges and around the cardboard and everything getting that painted my little uh, label sign there and then I'm coming in with some black chalk paint here and a pouncy brush. I'm pouncing the paint on I'll heat set it in between and then I'll do another coat just to give that woodward a little bit of texture. And then I'm coming in and just sanding along the edges here just a little bit, give it a little bit more of a rustic look here. But yeah, I should have mentioned that at the beginning. You can do this project with just one sign and glue your ears on the back. So now I'm covering the back completely. I covered it with a piece of black cardstock just to make sure it's all finished off. And now I'm coming in and I'm adding all the rest of my papers to my other pieces here. I like my back finished off because I often sell these at craft shows or if people email me and they're interested in purchasing something, it looks all finished and complete. So now I'm taking some of that chalk paint again. I've mixed it with water and I'm pouncing it on, no, not pouncing it on, splattering it with my fan brush. I dip it in the paint and then dip it off under some paper and then I tap the fan brush to add some splatters onto my papers and my ears. And now I'm coming in and using my Fabri-Tac glue and I'm just gluing my ears down into place. Looking really cute. And I'm gonna go ahead and glue my hello word onto our little label sign here. And then I'm gonna come in, you see I've already got glue on my other wood sign and I'm gonna add a little bit more glue onto this one and we're gonna sandwich everything right in between. Perfect. Looks really cute and now you can see how nice that looks. Everything's painted, uh, you know, no space in between the wood. So I created my uh, thing here with my Cricut Design Space. Um, I'll leave the fonts in the description box for you, of course. I took the little dot off the eye and I printed out a little heart in vinyl. Everything's done in vinyl here. I wanted to replace that with a little heart. You could use letter stickers or, you know, paint it on or write it on however you want would be really cute and I'm just adding the spring word to the bottom portion 
Yes, we have a little visitor on the right side today. Sorry. Uh, she likes to visit with me when I craft sometimes. And then we're going to go ahead and add our little label over the top with that. So it says, Hello Spring. Going to bend our ears just a little bit. That's why I wanted some wire in there, just to give the ears a little personality. And I've just got some white twine here. I'm just tying it into a bow. And then I've painted some really tiny, tiny beads. I'm going to add two on each end of the tails of the bow. And then, of course, tie it in a knot at the end so our beads don't fall off, cut off the excess. And I'll go ahead and glue that onto one ear here. And then I'm going to glue that twine just a little bit onto the sign. And then I've got these little hearts from Valentine's, the little hearts on the pick. You all know I've been using these a lot. And I'm just going to glue one right in the center of our little bow. Perfect. And I'm going to add one more little heart here because we have the heart up top, the heart on the eye, and one heart here gives us a nice trio of hearts, deciding where I want it. Now I want my sign to stand up, so I've taken five Jenga blocks here and four of them as you can see I glued them one on top of the other at a slant. You want that because the sign is very top heavy and if you don't do it like that it's just going to fall over. So four to slant and one more at the bottom for stability. You go ahead and glue that on just like this. It sits up perfect and that makes this project complete. I'm super excited to be joining in with a few of my friends today for some spring inspired DIYs. First up is Leonep, whose channel is DIY Beauty on Purpose. Leonep is a multi talented crafter whose creativity to make beautiful home decor is like next level. Um, her furniture flips, thrift flips, Dollar Tree crafts, high end dupes, you name it, she does it. She isn't afraid to pull out the power tools for farmhouse rustic DIYs or bring in that soft floral beauty for sweet home decor. I just love everything she does. I'll make sure her link to her spring inspirational DIYs is in the description box below. Next up is Lisa, who is Dollar Mom here on YouTube. She does beautiful, inexpensive, fun DIYs using Dollar Tree supplies for everyday home decor. Lisa comes from a world of scrapbooking as I do, and she loves incorporating these elements into her DIYs, which takes everything to a new level. And I think that kind of brought us together as kindred spirits and great friends. I'll make sure I will have her link in that description box as well for you. You can watch both of these videos after you watched my video. With that said, let's get started with project number two. For this project, I'm going to use one of these houses from Dollar Tree and the pack of square wood pieces like this. I'm going to use one. And then this is the rest of the sign that has the hanging carrots on it. Remember, we used the carrots in the last video. And so the first thing I'm going to do is just cut down this piece, cut about an inch off of it. Just kind of using my craft knife here against the ruler. Get a few passes and then you should be able to kind of snap it off. And then what I want to do next is I want to use just the ears off of this piece. So I want to kind of mark where I want it to sit on our little house here. And then again, taking my craft knife and my ruler, I can just go ahead and kind of do a few passes and then snap it off. Nice and easy. And then, of course, I'm going to just take a little bit of sanding paper here and kind of sand down the edges on this wood piece here and use my scissors to cut off the excess here. I get a lot of questions on these scissors. These are like scrapbooking scissors. Tim Holtz Tonic Studios. They come in a short and long uh, blade design. I'll make sure I get this particular uh, model uh, down in my description box from Amazon for you. And then the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and remove all the paper I can off these ears. Now I'm going to use some of this thick chipboard. I use this a lot in my videos. This is what I get. It comes in a pack of 25. I get it from joannes.com. You can, uh, and it's 12 by 12. You can also get an 8 by 11 or 6 by 6. I'll link those in the description box for you as well. As I said, I use this all the time. So all I did was trace the house and I'm just cutting it out. This cardboard is thick, so it kind of works for me to use a swing arm cutter. 
and that way it'll cover that opening on the back just like that when we go to do that next thing I want to do is take these ears figure out where I want to lay them how far down on the back of the house and then I'm going to put them on that cardboard piece where I've marked it and I'm going to trace around this ear and then this ear <laughs> both ears I'm going to trace around both of them okay and then I'm going to take my trusty heavy duty scissors these are a serrated blade by the way um, and I use them to cut wire, thick cardboards, metal, all sorts of things. But once you start cutting those kind of things, be uh, a little bit cautious because then it doesn't like to cut paper very well. So these are going to be utility scissors. So this part I marked out, I'm going to cut out. And then I've decided my ear is a little bit thick, so I have cut two of these from the cardboard and I'm gluing them together. I'll use DIY White Swan uh, Debbie's Design Diary chalk paint to paint all my pieces here and then I'm also going to use this scrapbook paper double-sided scrapbook paper so I'm going to kind of use greens and pinks today all those kind of coordinate together and of course I'm going to just trace all my pieces onto my papers trace my little ears all sorts of things and I'll have that all cut out off camera and I'm going to add one of these hearts from Dollar Tree, the pack of wooden hearts that came out at Valentine's. So, and I'm just going to go ahead and start painting everything around the perimeter. You know, because we'll cover up most of it with paper, but our edges will be seen. I think this turned out really super cute. I like how it looks. Once that's all dry and set, I've got all my papers here cut, as you can see. I'm going to take them to the sewing machine, just like I did in the first project. So around the edges of everything. Show you just a little bit. There's how cute it looks. And then, of course, just as the first project and into the third project, I'm going to go ahead and distress around the edges with my scissors. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead, like the first project, and using that uh, white swan chalk paint, I'm going to splatter just my pink pieces because I think it'll be too much to splatter the other uh, colors. So just the pink ones, just to give it a little texture. Now we're going to start gluing everything. The back side is totally in green. Don't these ears look like little ducks now? <laughs> Every time I look at this, I'm like, they're ducks, but they're ears. Covering the back side to make them all nice and finished off. And then I'm going to add to the front. Now the front, I cut it a little bit short, as you can see here. So you can see around the perimeter on the ears. You can see the wood around the edge. I did the same thing on the heart, the sign, and then the front and sides of my house. The back will be completely covered. I'll go ahead and get the glue on all of these right up front so we can just attach them really quickly. This is super quick and easy. And like I said, I just love how it turned out. So we're going to go ahead and put these papers on the side. Now you don't have to cover the sides of paper. You can leave it just painted if you like. Looking super cute. Just like this. Do you guys know that I will sell most of my items at craft shows or someone e emails me and is interested? You know, I like everything finished off. So now I'm just adding glue right to the cutouts here, and I'm going to add my ears right inside so it's glued just around the edges here. Let that sit up, and then I'll flip it over. And I'm going to add just some double-sided tape here because it is handy. You can just use just like some regular uh, painter's tape or something like that just to hold it in position so they don't fall out. And I'm going to leave it there. And I'm not going to peel off the part, you know, because it's double-sided. Just leaving it just like that. So painter's tape or duct tape, something like that will work just fine. And then I'm going to add some glue right around the edge of our house here. And I'm going to add this, add this whole ensemble to the back side. Then for the back side, all I did was trace the front of the house so it completely fit the back side and cover it completely up. We're going to glue that piece of paper on so everything is sandwiched in nice and pretty. And then we're going to go ahead and put our little title on our wood sign here. Now, I did this from Cricut Design Space. You could add letter stickers or you could actually, you know, uh, work on something in like a word program print it off your computer before you cut the paper out to fit your sign I used to do that all the time before I got an electronic cutting machine 
And then we're going to go ahead and glue this sign onto the front of our house. And then we're going to go ahead and glue the heart on our ear. And once we do that, this project is complete. With that said, let's move on to our last project, number three. In this project, I'm gonna use one of these taller houses versus the last project, we use a shorter one. I'm gonna use one of these crosses. And this is a wood word. I got out of these package of wood words you can get at Hobby Lobby in the unfinished wood section, this wood pile brand, it was $3.99. It came with just various words, <laughs> no rhyme or reason to them, but gonna use that. And I'm gonna use another piece of this cardboard that I've cut out, just like we did on the other one. And I'm gonna use one of these wood planks as well. And what I'm going to do is I want to make like a little tag that's the same shape of the house. So I kind of found the center of my wood tag and put it up against the house and, you know, drew that, you know, shape. So it's exact same shape. And I'm cutting about an inch off the bottom as well. I'm just using my craft knife and ruler and I can go through it, you know, four or five passes and then I can kind of snap it off. Just like this. And then I'll just come in with a little bit of sandpaper and, you know, this is kind of cheaply layered wood so it has a lot of splinters sand off all those rough edges and then i'm going to come in and glue the cardboard to the back of the house now i'm sorry i don't know where my footage went painting all this but i used dixie bell chalk paint and the color drop cloth i painted my houses and then a tag and a little wood heart that i used from dollar tree i used this kind of waverly kind of taupey gray paint and mixed it with a little bit of drop cloth i've got all my pieces already cut out i you know wanted to spare you that i've sewed around all the edges we already seen it on the last couple of projects i cut everything a little bit short all the way around just like we did on the other ones and now i'm you know just you know, giving my rustic look to the edges using my scissor blades here and scraping along the edges. And then we'll just start kind of uh, adding things to their pieces. So I've got my cross here. You can see how I cut that paper a little bit short. I love these papers. This paper, I don't even remember what paper pad it came out. It's really old, but I love that kind of soft floral look. Chose blues for this one. And I've got this paper down. Uh, the front and the sides, I cut everything a little bit short, and then the back will be fully covered, just like I usually do. I cover the back completely, and then I usually make the rest of the pieces, you know, a little bit short all the way around. Just kind of going ahead and adding my glue here so it's a little bit quicker. Perfect. I just like how this looks and you don't have to cover the sides you could just do a piece of paper on the front you could paint the whole thing you don't even have to add paper to it it's you know you could choose what you want I'm gonna come in for a little sleeping kitty break this is marley she is out <laughs> she is sleeping she loves to lay on my bag that holds my ipad for some reason so that's what she's laying on anyway because you've seen her kind of throughout all our projects today i'm adding my paper to the front of the tag i decided to add a little uh wood tag here on the front of this these come in a pack of like five at hobby lobby they're this shape already i didn't have to cut it or anything in their unfinished wood section again and i painted around the edges again with that drop cloth and just adding some paper to the front of that so we kind of have a little double layer tag here. And then I'm gonna add some paper to my little heart. Again, these are those packages of hearts that came from Dollar Tree at Valentine's. And then I'm gonna do a little bit of splattering again as well. There it goes, just real tiny splattering. That's why I like to use a fan brush um, and you wipe off that excess and you just tap it. It just gives you that really just tiny, tiny splatter detail. If you don't tap off the excess, you'll get nice big dots. And I've done that before too. Now I'm going to go ahead and glue this top tag onto our middle tag. We're going to lay this whole thing like sideways, like a horizontal tag when it's all complete. And I'm adding the little wood heart to the cross, so that kind of finishes the cross off. And then I'm painting the loved word with that drop cloth paint. And I decide to go and add in a couple more hearts. So we have like a trio of hearts here. I end up using one of these, you know, the hearts on a skewer. I took it off the skewer and painted it with the drop cloth and brought in another wood heart here as well. Again, painted with drop cloth. We're gonna add our little decorative paper on top. 
And now I wanted to add some more words here. So you are loved will be our quote. These are just plastic letters in my supply from scrapbooking days. You could use sticker letters would work great here. Punched a hole in my wood heart with a crocodile tool. I'm going to add one of these bulb pins. You can get these from Walmart. I have seen them on Amazon. And we're just going to pin this to the front of this wired ribbon and this ribbon I got at Walmart. And I'm going to add a little washer detail to our tag. You don't really need it, but it just kind of gives it a, a, a semblance like it is a tag, like we would put string through it, you know. Um, but I don't know. It's there. You're, you're not going to see much of it, but it's kind of like I know it's there, just that little bit of detail. And then I'll glue that whole tag ensemble onto the larger tag. And then I'm going ahead and gluing down my letters here. Again, you could do sticker letters here would be great. And these letters are probably maybe three quarter inch tall and then I'll add in my loved words so our whole thing says you are loved and then I add a little heart at the end of the loved word like it's you know end of the sentence you are loved and then I share this a lot this uh, kind of design element I've got three hearts here we know things look good in odd numbers but things always look pleasing to the eye too when you have similar elements like these three hearts if they're placed in a, like a triangular fashion onto your project. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue this bow onto that washer. So see, you see a little bit of it. And then off camera, I'll just kind of glue the tails down just a little bit. And then that makes this project complete. So I hope you liked all the fun spring inspirational projects I came up with today. Leave me a comment down below and let me know which project was your favorite or which project you want to make right now. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Please give my video a thumbs up. It really helps me out a lot. And if you walked in here just to check things out or you're coming over from Leonep or Lisa's channel, thank you so much for joining me today. If you like what you saw here, make sure before you click off, you hit that red subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on a single project from me. Thank you Lisa and Leonette for collaborating with me today, sharing all these fun inspirational DIYs. Remember everyone, I will have their links in the description box to their videos so you can go check out what they made. Before I go, I'm going to leave you with one final thought. In turmoil and pain, we often feel alone in our problems and can easily forget that God is in control and working on our behalf and we can't seem to see a way out. Sometimes we tend to feel so alone that darkness or depression tries to settle in. The enemy loves to use this darkness and depression to pull you away from God and keep you falling further down that rabbit hole. Do not listen to the enemy. Do not listen to the darkness he's trying to put in your head. Listen to what God is saying. Listen to what his word says. God is here. Allow his power to pull you up out of that darkness. He has a plan and purpose for you. You have to stand on faith that the spirit of God is working with you and not against you. You have to stand on faith that God will not let you fall. You have to stand on faith that God will not let you take that step backward over the ledge. And you have to stand on faith that he will not let you trip over that boulder. You must know that God is God and he is always hearing you, always seeing you. He always knows your situations and he is always near. He wants you to know that he is in your life and at work today. He is up to something this very day. You are not doing this alone. You are not going down this road alone. He knows exactly what you need to fix that ever seeming impossible situation. Be encouraged and know that God will not fail on his promises. Trust him. He is your cornerstone. He is your streams where abundance flow. He is your river of life. He is your light in the darkness. He is your bright morning star. Receive that. Stand up and fight. I thank you for sharing your time with me, and I'll talk with you again soon. Bye.